Do you often find yourself dying in dungeons or weekly normal raids less often than you'd like to? Do you get annoyed by those obnoxiously long res macros from duty finder healers? Do you know what this thing means? Let's talk about it. This video will use examples from endgame endwalker content, so spoilers for dungeon and raid content ahead beyond this point. There are a lot of dungeon specific mechanics that don't translate into other content too well, but there are some unifying principles and general tips that you can apply to all situations. My hope is that by the end of this video you'll be able to see some improvement in your own gameplay as well as be able to give out some pointers when you see someone struggling. Some of these tips can be a little complex, but I'll do my best to explain them in detail. Number 1. Stand on the edge of AoEs. This one sounds a bit dangerous at first, but trust me. In most content, the safest spot to stand is a space that already had an AoE go off, and some mechanics even rely on it. Take Prance, for example. The entire arena is taken up by AoEs, so when they start to go off there isn't an easily visible place to stand. The only way to not take damage is to remember which AoE was placed first, and then move into it after it goes off, once the safe spot has then been created. Building this habit of standing on the edge of AoEs will build the foundation for never getting hit by a floor AoE again. Number 2. Take a look at your surroundings. This one is specific to each arena, but there are some similar things you can look out for. Take this arena for example. Why is it shaped like a square? Why are there smaller squares inside of it, and even smaller squares inside of those squares? Well, it's because each detail on the floor can help you line yourself up with mechanics. Take this knockback mechanic for example. It's close to the edge, and if you stand in the slightly the wrong spot, even just two or three yams to the left or right, you'll find yourself getting a lot of iron in your diet when you start munching on those spikes in the kill wall. But how can I know where to stand if I've never done the content before? Well, one thing you could do is watch the people around you. Most of the time, especially when you're doing content that has been around for a while, there are going to be people who know what to do and they'll do the mechanics right. But what about when everyone is new? Well, that's where looking at the arena comes into play. Let's look at the floor around the cape. There's a bunch of these little diamonds here on the ground, and one of them is right in front of the cape. Turns out that this little guy is perfectly placed for you to line yourself up with so you'll always get pushed towards the center in a perfect line with no chance of dying. Want another example? Let's take this arena right here. At first glance, it may seem strange. Raised platforms in the shape of squares with grates in a place that kind of looks like a sewer? Seems like to me there's going to be some sort of water mechanic. And lo and behold, there is. You may think to yourself, wow, there's never been a water mechanic like this before in any content that I've done. Well, that's where you're wrong. All the way back in Labyrinth of the Ancients in ARR, there are these huge squares with raised platforms where poison comes up and you have to search for higher ground. Number 3. Be ready to fail. No matter who you are, whenever you go into new content, or at least content that's new to you, there's going to be something that you've never seen before, and it's okay to die. It's okay to die even on your 10th run. No one is perfect, and once you've entered a mindset to learn rather than brute force your way through the content, you'll see massive improvement. Don't be afraid to reach out and ask questions of other people, and look for guides online on how to do certain fights. Or you know, subscribe to people who make guides on YouTube. Number 4. Being alive is better than being dead. Now I know this one sounds a bit sarcastic, but it's true. In almost every situation, it's better if you're alive than if you're dead, no matter what role you're playing. This means giving up on dealing damage whenever mechanics are going off until you know the fight really, really well. Any time that you lose hitting the big baddie will be made up for by the fact that you won't die, then get res, then get that annoying little debuff that tells everyone that you died, and that you're dealing a whole lot less damage than if you didn't. If you commit your attention to what's going on, rather than putting out the most damage you can, you will see a massive increase in your time spent not being dead on the ground. Number 5. Customize your user interface. This one is really important and can help you in all the time that you play this game. It doesn't matter if you click every ability on your screen or press 15 keybinds a second. Neither place though will help you easily know what direction south is when the boss is doing a directional mechanic. This is my combat UI. Two of the major things I'll point out are the enormous enemy caspar and the enormous map. The most important thing about customizing your UI is knowing where your vision is going to be at any given time during the fight. If you watch your character a lot, then put the enemy caspar close to your character. If you watch the party list a lot, if say you're a healer, then put it next to the party list. To give an example, this boss uses spells called left cinderwing and right cinderwing, meaning that when it completes the cast, that whole side of the arena is going to get hit by an AoE, so you better get on the other side. But what if it has a direction like this one? Well, then that means you need to look in the direction to see what's going on. This is why I have my minimap so large on my screen, so I can know at any given time what my directional input and directional facing is compared to north. Number 6. Know your role's position. 
In parties, there are plenty of people all doing things all at once, which can make things pretty hectic when the boss puts markers on you that makes you into a walking time bomb. But there are some ways to deal with this a bit better so you don't accidentally kill your friends. The first thing you can do is stand your ground. Make other people conform to you, and you'll find that more often than not, they will move away from you with their own AoE. This tactic can be a bit selfish, but it's better than both of you dying. If you and the person next to you both keep running in the same direction trying to get away from one another, expecting the other person to go the other way, then more often than not, you both end up dying. The second thing you can do is move to your role position. This is a topic we'll cover in a future guide in more detail, but the gist of it is that each role has a place they typically want to be. Melee DPS want to be close to the boss on its back or its flank to do their positionals, tanks want to be standing in front of the boss, facing it north to give everyone a reference point for mechanics, and healers want to be somewhere in the middle to hit everyone with their AoE healing after raid-wide damage. If you take this into consideration when the whole party gets targeted with splash AoEs, you'll find that most people want to stay where they are, and if you know where people usually want to sit, then you know if you're the one who needs to move or not. Number 7. Know when to cut your losses. Sometimes, it's just inevitable that you're gonna take damage, especially when learning a new fight. But taking damage doesn't always mean that you're dead. In so many raid settings, there are mechanics that either explode multiple times, or you need to run while AoEs drop down behind you, or sometimes you're just on the wrong side of the arena. In situations like these, the best thing you can do is quickly look at all the things that could damage you and stand in just one of them, because more often than not, you're gonna live. Take this very complex freeze frame right here. So the boss is about to cleave my side of the arena and make certain parts of the floor explode. Since I don't have any Voln stacks, if I get hit by only one mechanic, I won't die. For this thought experiment, let's ignore abilities like Shikuchi or Rescue or any displacement abilities like Onivon. There's no way for me to get from this point all the way to one of the safe spots on the other side of the arena. So I'm best off standing right here so I only get hit once. And that's the end of our Raid Basics tips. If you liked the video, then make sure to check out my other guides and subscribe to the channel for more content. If you want to support me further, take a look down in the description for methods to do that. Until next time, take care.